your seat belts. It's time for another one of my psychoanthophilosophy vlogs. Yes, I just combined psychology, anthropology, and philosophy into a single word. I guess maybe I should have given you a little more time to get your belt buckled before that. Sorry. Forging onward. What I want to talk about today comes from a very fabulous article by Zadie Smith called Generation Y, which was published in the New York Review of Books and is ostensibly a review of the movie The Social Network, also known as That Facebook Movie. But what the article ends up doing is diving beyond the movie and analyzing the influence of Facebook itself on our society. And it does so through a particularly fascinating framework, which she borrows from a programmer named Jaron Lanier, which he wrote about in a book called You Are Not a Gadget. Basically, Lanier makes the point that computer software has a tendency to shape our lives in particularly nefarious ways. He arrives at this conclusion through four preliminary points. Number one, software designs are created on a whim, yet it's relatively easy for them to become locked in. This is because software is so replicable that once they're created, designs are very easy to proliferate, and because other systems tend to build upon the ones that have come before. Lanier uses the example of files. There are a variety of other ways information could be digitally organized, but someone happened to decide to go with files and everything else built off that. Point two is that software is not neutral. Different softwares embody different philosophies. Or as Lanier puts it, different media designs stimulate different potentials in human nature. When you're organizing things into files, you focus on different relationships between them than you would if you were organizing them in a Venn diagram or on a map or in a flowchart. The system you're using influences the very way you understand things. Point number three is that the more widespread these designs and the philosophies they embody become, the more invisible they are to us. They're everywhere, and so we begin to assume they're just natural ways of thinking. Once again, to quote Lanier, these ways of thinking eventually become our truth. The more universal files become, the harder it is to think of organizing information in any way besides in little packets grouped hierarchically in categories of similarity. Finally, point number four is that the way that computer systems portray the world underrepresents reality. Lanier argues that the belief that computers can presently represent human thought or human relationships is a philosophical mistake. These are things that computers currently cannot do. The human brain organizes information along all sorts of unexpected dimensions with random connections and meandering pathways that no computer system, not files and not anything else programmers have been able to come up with yet, is able to replicate. Now here's where Smith's article comes in. She points out that Facebook is a software system created rather whimsically by a college sophomore, and you can see the individual preoccupations of its creator embedded deep within its structure. What is your relationship status? There can only be one answer. People need to know. What do you like? Options include books, movies, television shows, and music, but not ideas, plants, or architecture. Indeed, Facebook exemplifies each of Lanier's forewarnings about computer software. Its initial whimsical framework is inescapably entrenched. It encapsulates very specific philosophies about how people should represent themselves and relate to one another. It has begun to be so universal as to seem utterly natural. And it reduces people and their relationships to something that can be organized in a database, which is a superficial underrepresentation. Now, the truth is that pretty much everything exemplifies these forewarnings. And it's not just computer software, it's all of culture. But the thing about software that separates it from, say, cultural myths passed down through the generations is that most things that get passed from person to person inevitably shift and mutate as they get passed along, so that you don't have one monolithic framework, but rather a hundred different variations on it. So as you go through your life, you'll inevitably encounter people who have been shaped by cultural frameworks that are slightly different from yours. And it's in the encounter between two different frameworks that deeper and more complicated and new understandings can arise in people. But software can be copied identically millions of times without any kind of mutation, which means you're much less likely to encounter people who have been shaped by a different version of it, and thus much less likely to have those framework clashing moments that are so often the source of humanity's greatest creativity. Of course, even within the medium of software, there are more and less constraining frameworks that we encounter. For instance, YouTube is a far less entrenching, less constraining, less reducing framework than something like Facebook. Facebook gives you very specific prompts and boxes and ways to encapsulate your Yourself. YouTube gives you one big box and lets you fill it with pretty much anything your computer is capable of producing, which is still a reduction, but it's less of one. YouTube's box allows for things as varied as this super cool stop motion animated Charlie Brown and Rudolph attended Christmas party, which I definitely recommend you check out, and this tech review and news show, which includes an interview with me and Alexandra if you want to see that. This isn't to say that Facebook is evil and we should all close our accounts before the world comes crashing down around us. It's just to say that we should be aware of the influence that frameworks like Facebook can have on the way we think about the world around us and even the way we understand ourselves. And we should work to make sure we're exposed to a varied enough set of different types of frameworks to allow ourselves to experience those moments of framework-clashing creativity. As Lanier put it, if you love a media made of software, 
There's a danger you may become entrapped in someone else's recent careless thoughts. Struggle against that. It is now safe to remove your seatbelts and move about the cabin.